a borderless nation. That's Joe Biden's plan for the United States. Biden's signing an unprecedented number of executive orders, six of them concerning illegal immigration, with all of them undoing former President Donald Trump's pro-America policies. Many are fearing these reversals will have huge impacts on our national security. Joining me now to discuss this, Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, who also graces the cover of Newsmax magazine's February issue. Senator, it's always wonderful to see you. Happy New Year, lady. And Biden's orders that prevent deportations stop the construction of the border wall and signals basically an invitation, a red carpet invitation to replicate the crisis at the border that was during the Obama administration and mix into all of this a highly communicable disease courtesy of communist China. What does this mean for national security? One of the things it means for national security is that our domestic security is going to be suffering. When you look at the caravans that are coming and when you talk to the Border Patrol agents, which I have done this week, here is what they're saying. Having the border wall go up was a tremendous help to them. Getting new technology and an emphasis on more agents and more officers at the border. This helped them to do their job. They're very concerned when they see these caravans coming and pushing toward the United States. They're very grateful that we were able to get a judge to stop the deport, to allow the deportations to put a stay on that um, order. And they know that during this period of time, they have got to be planning to live through what they had to live through during the Obama years. Now, here is one thing to consider. And I think our friends across the aisle would be wise to think about this. One of the reasons that President Trump was elected and one of the reasons people were saying build a wall is because they saw the drug cartels the human traffickers, the sex traffickers, the gangs move from the border and into communities all across this country. In essence, every town became a border town, every state a border state, dealing with the impact of drugs, dealing with the impact of human trafficking and sex trafficking. So what people are saying, local law enforcement are saying is you need to stop this. We do not want an open border. We do not want the cartels just continuing coming back in and establishing some of these old patterns that they had during the Obama-Biden years. So hopefully there will be other judges that will step up and will put a stay on some of these executive orders and memos that President Biden is pushing forward with now. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I wanted to ask you about this because, Senator, as you know, the only reason why a judge was able to make a ruling is that one Republican out of the entire United States, one Republican filed a lawsuit. His name is Ken Paxton in the state of Texas. Uh, I remember during the uh, Trump administration, Every single time he put across a policy, there was some leftist out there suing him in court to stop his agenda. However, only one Republican has stepped forward to stop this, this massive amount of executive orders coming out of, out of the Biden administration. Are you disappointed that more Republicans across this country aren't trying to stop this socialist lurch left? My understanding is that some of the attorney generals in five or six states are currently preparing lawsuits on some of these executive orders, the immigration and the uh, energy executive orders. So I think give them a couple of days and they will uh, start getting these lawsuits okay. filed. Okay, uh, let's move on. Today, the D.C. police revealed that they had information two days prior to the riot on Capitol Hill. Yet Democrats and 10 uninformed Republicans in the House voted to impeach President Trump for inciting that riot. How can President Trump be accused of inciting a pre-planned riot that now the FBI and the Capitol Police admit was pre-planned? 
And uh, this is one of the things that I think is so important to look at is that timeline. And the fact that now you are hearing that they had information, they did not take additional precautions or investigate these um, this information. That is something that should cause everyone pause. When it comes to the impeachment proceedings that the Democrats are so insistent on moving forward, I think the Democrats would do well to look at the precedent that they're trying to establish, which is to impeach a former president for actions that took place during their time of service. And while January 6th and what took place at the Capitol was terrible, what we have to do is also look at the fact that President Trump is now a former president. So if you want to follow the Democrats' logic, would you call Jimmy Carter back and say, we want to go through impeachment because of the Panama Canal, or call back Bill Clinton, or Barack Obama, and or after <laughs> President Biden leaves, impeach him for an action. Uh, that is what you would be opening the door for. Yeah, I can think of I can think of a bazillion reasons to impeach Obama, but we can go down that road a different day. Look, thousands of Americans have become victims of Mr. Biden. Their jobs have been wiped out with a stroke of his pen. We talked to one of those Biden victims yesterday. Listen to this. Sometimes, you know, the job loss is the small part. It's the domino effect, the trickle down effect that's uh, that's really going to hurt people. This is a bigger problem than union versus non-union. This is a, an attack on American workers. Uh, how can we fight a union, non-union battle if there's no work to fight over? <laughs> that That's the least of my worries yeah. right now. That's a great question. With the GOP now helpless to stop this government large lurch left in Washington, D.C., how do you answer his question? Where, where are people like him, victims of Joe Biden, to turn when he takes away their jobs like that? And where are these new jobs that Biden is saying, well, they're going to be new jobs? It's like Pete Buttigieg when he was going uh, before us at Commerce Committee for his hearing. He said, well, we would like for them to get better union jobs. Here is the problem. When it comes to like the Keystone Pipeline, 11,000 jobs gone with the stroke of the pen. All of these ancillary jobs that are attached to those, all gone with the stroke of the pen. You're talking tens of thousands of jobs. You're talking communities where these workers are not going to be buying food or buying gas or staying in hotels while they're working on this pipeline. They're not going to be refining that crude in the U.S. It is going to go to the Pacific and then into China, and then China is going to sell it back to us and our allies. Does this make sense? No, it does not. No. And you look at the job you know what? that Biden has destroyed this week by pen and phone executive orders. Yeah, we talked about that in our preamble, that uh, that China, China is just going to burn this stuff. They're, they're going to get the oil, they're going to burn it, and they're going to yeah. cause more harm to the environment because we, we know what Biden did. He, he sacrificed thousands of American jobs to appease China. Folks, don't forget, uh, Senator Blackburn, her picture graces the cover of Newsmax magazine. Uh, make sure, the February edition, make sure you pick it up and check it out. And Senator, it's always a delight to talk with you. Come back soon. We look forward to visiting with you then. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.